Hey everybody, Young Grasshopper here. Welcome to my temple. I'm here with my good friend Jerry the Jerry and we're playing a one-on-one -on -one game of Axe and Allies 1940 Global 2nd Edition. We're playing out-of-box rules, pure out-of-box rules. The only house rule that we're using today is the fact that when you take a capital and purge the money from the capital, you can't do it twice. So every other time you conquer the same capital, the money will go to the bank the second time and thereafter. That's the only house rule we're doing. And we just finished turn one. Jerry is the Axis. That's where he got his name, Jerry the Jerry. <laughs> and we are in round two. And yours truly, Young Grasshoppers, playing the Allies. Let's take a look and see what happened turn one. He's going into his Germany turn two, but he took out the fleet in 111 and 110. I was lucky to get a sub, even though he took my destroyer off Canada. And I did something I don't normally do. I squeezed my ships out of the Mediterranean. I was able to get his destroyer and transport in 96. He took quite a bit Italian fleet to take uh, the French units there and he took southern France. And he got his bonus for no ships in the med. He's building up quite a bit on the eastern front right away. No signs of sea lion even though I went ahead and purchased my 6th Infantry and a Fighter in London, just to be safe. His round 2 purchases are a lot of tanks and a sub. I had to take my cruiser up here to take out a damaged Bismarck with two submarines remaining. I strategic bombed Paris for max damage. A lot of maneuvering for the Russians. I had really bad dice for the Chinese turn one, but I did manage to get, retaliate and get that stack down. I moved up with the Brits because his fleet is all the way over here. And because of that, I built up and kept Sydney safe, purchased a fighter. And over here for the Americans, we backed up, of course, with so many ships off Hawaii, I purchased two aircraft carriers and a battleship and I left the two men there my fighter went to Guam and of course we see his entire Japanese air force right here now when it comes to stuff like this guys um, you can see that what Jerry has done is he's put a bunch of planes here but he's still got a, a chip with a fighter and a chip down there with a tactical bomber. I'm gonna suggest if you do that guys that you swap out those chips because in a mess like that, what can happen is they get mixed up. We don't know if those are two fighters or two tacticals. So he's gonna do that now. I moved my fast moving uh, Russians up to the front, but for the most part, kept a lot back sending two AA guns to China. <coughs> no, I do not have coronavirus. Um, we have not played for a long, long time. Jerry and I are symptom free and we usually have groups of five or six. Of course, we're just doing a one on one. So we're going to get into round two now and it looks like he's coming after my cruiser and destroyer with one sub and a bunch of planes. I do have a scramble option, but uh, we'll see. All right, guys, I'll be back at the end of round two. Cheers. Hey everyone, I'm back and we are beginning round three. Let's take a look and see what happened round two. So Japan did not attack the Pacific Allies round two. Japan did not attack round two. However, 
Britain's turn, UK Pacific here. They attacked. They walked in here, took this. That allowed them to collect some national objectives. However, they got severely convoyed here, made, made that a moot point. And Anzac was able to take some dollars. They actually kept their money. Anzac has 30 IPCs, so if you see a big purchase here in the next round. Uh, so they kept their money and got 20 IPCs. Britain fell back here because of the landing force that has now moved. And China, it's looking a little stalemate. We'll see. It is Germany's turn. Germany's turn. Let's take a look and see. So Russia moved back. They're on their way out. Are these on Formosa or on the transports? Transports. They're on the transports. <clears throat> so a couple of attacks here from the troops in Malaya. Keeping my aircraft safe for now in the Queensland Air Base. America just built up. They've got quite the force there off San Francisco. No threat to Hawaii. Well, perhaps with a single transport up there. The UK is on the move towards Iraq. We've got our Pacific fleet combined with our Mediterranean fleet. I bought three mechanized infantry down there, took out the Italians. They took Egypt, however, and they consolidated their fleet, built another transport. However, a move into Greece did not fare quite well. <clears throat> Jerry made a mistake not bringing these two infantry down However, with the bombardments and the infantry that I did bring in, thought it would be enough. However, he left an infantry and I hit with all four Greeks, leaving one neutral there in Greece. A buildup of transports here for the Americans, plus an aircraft carrier, the Brits. Now, I scrambled, there's no threat of sea lion it seems, so I scrambled against all those planes going after my cruiser and destroyer. I lost my three planes and my two boats, but I was able to take a sub and two planes, was it Jay? Yeah. My strategic bomber alone has been doing well, maxed out the factory in France. Turn one, max out the factory in Normandy. Turn two, and that's where we're at. There was a couple of can openers here for the Italians. They're on their way to Moscow. I'm doing what I can to hold on. I'm on the retreat already. I could have been a nuisance and stayed up, but I didn't want to gamble anything right now. And that's where we're at at the end of round two. Lots of ships in the Indian Ocean. However, we've got the Japanese on the move. The Italians got a foothold in North Africa. And we'll see what the Americans can do. They're still neutral, but the Russians are in the war. Collected a five IPC national objective for the national prestige. All right. Beginning round three, Germany's turn. Hey everybody, I'm back, round four. We just completed round three, we are in round four. Lots of happened, lots of happened indeed. So, Japan is on the move. Some good significant gains for the Axis in this last round. So they took all the islands, collected a bonus. I just took one back. 
and with uh, all that money Anzac uh, spent on some boats and a strategic bomber and was unable to crack the Burma road so that is solidified I've come back to defend here come back to defend here oh my plane needs to fly back so Japan is in decent position we'll find out what they do I have baited them into trying to come in here and take four Anzac planes in the Philippines with the two infantry maybe that'll distract them from going deeper into Calcutta so not much to show in the Pacific it's pretty empty the Americans bought two bombers and a transport here they are finally at war they collected at the end of turn three <clears throat> pretty bare in the Pacific the Japs control South Pacific for sure with no opponents in the water there is the Indian Ocean, the Brits are here with a couple of American boats that escaped but uh, we took Iraq and there's been a back and forth a little bit over Egypt right now the Italians hold it that's the situation in Africa they still got their big fleet Brits still have their big fleet Brits hold Iraq, Italy holds Egypt, and that's the story in the Med. The Eastern Front, the Germans are coming on hard. They're buying nothing but tanks. Lots and lots of tanks. This chip here represents what's on this tile. So you can see the, the forces both here and here coming towards my capital so by stacking a little bit extra here and here and here Italy did not attempt any more can openers may have slowed them down a little bit but this is very very hard to contain and where did all those Americans go in the Pacific well I shot them over here so it is the beginning of round four. The Americans have transports, aircraft carriers, infantry, max tanks, all in position for a landing. The Brits bought an aircraft carrier off Canada and brought it over to the coast now with two transports. Not much of a threat. The destroyer and one plane perhaps. And the single, the single British bomber was able to max out this factory, max out this factory. I only got half damage on this factory, but <clears throat> one single Brit bomber did all that damage on those factories and still survived. I bought another one, so now we have two. It looks like this is Jerry the Jerry's next purchase. very tightly contested game so far um, we're both in relatively good position although hard to contain the Japs in the Pacific without American fleets over there hard to contain the German tanks rolling towards Moscow and we'll see about timing if this here can help or if it's just too late all right guys, thanks for thanks for checking in, sticking with the video, joining Jerry the Jerry and I as we play a one-on-one -on -one Axis and Allies 1940 Global 2nd Edition. Dice have been relatively back and forth, uh, some good, some bad for me, same with Jerry. So overall, nobody's getting horrific dice, so that's good hate to have a one-on-one -on -one game where one person just continues to miss constantly never fun so that is turn three we are going into turn four season okay guys we're back one-on-one -on -one game with Jerry the Jerry he 
he is playing the Axis. Yours truly, Young Grasshopper, playing the Allies. We are entering into turn five, ending turn four. Let's take a look and see what happened here. So the Americans were positioned. They made their move. They did a Spanish beachhead. Just to show you everything that's here. Did not lose any units on the Spaniards. Their neutral army defending. I also have this poised to come over in turn five. The British are looking okay. Still got that small fleet. We built a third bomber and a destroyer. Those bombers came down and finally maxed out southern France. So all three French factories maxed out. And over here, we had an opportunity and took it to take out the Italian fleet in 98 with those aircraft that landed in Syria. That was successful, lost one plane, but took out two cruisers and a battleship. I built a factory in Iraq. Now, the, those uh, theaters of war look pretty good for the Allies, but now Germany is on Moscow's doorstep. So you see that big giant token there, compliments of my buddy Wartorn. Those tokens, or that big round token represents everything on this tray right here. All kinds of infantry, tanks, artillery, mechs, not to mention what you see on the board on the front here. That tile is right on Moscow's doorstep. Take a look at my infantry stacks. I don't think it's enough. Probably gonna see a Moscow crush here not much I could have done I every turn moved my eastern units one step never missed a beat however they are late getting to the party wanted to get uh, a couple of Brit fighters up to Moscow however I saw the opportunity to take out the Italian fleet so I did it my Mediterranean fleet has rendezvoused with the Pacific Fleet, they're off Calcutta. Calcutta looks okay. Took back a couple of territories here. Japan, taking back an island, getting their five IPC national objective. They took the bait, went after the Philippines. I was able to take out a lot of infantry, really messing up his transport cargo. He purchased three destroy, uh, transports down here. He didn't realize that my bombers could reach Tokyo, so he opted not to put them there. And China was feeling okay enough to move up a space. So a lot still needs to be determined. Anzac, of course, is hemmed in. Can't do much. They bought another bomber, another transport see how it goes of course the Americans are all in on the other side so there's nothing over here really so the Brits and Anzac are alone against the Japs we both still continue to be in good positioning for what it is that we want to do Sure, he didn't like the fact that he lost his Italian ships, especially with the Americans over here. They put up a blocker and they built nothing but infantry and then artillery. Of course, here's the real story over here. Suppose the entire game comes down to dice, likely. Them being right on Moscow's doorstep, even though I look great here. Especially with those factories bombed and the Brits poised to build transports and support anything as well as all these infantry units coming back and do a transport shuck or maybe attack Rome. Let's leave them guessing there. But that's where we're at. This is how I find most out of box games getting to. Uh, an arrival point when the allies are just a round or two too late to land 
while the German panzer divisions are ready to take Moscow. This could be a typical script, of course, unless there's a sea lion or a failed sea lion or, you know, a kill, a kill Japan first strategy. But usually the Germans are on Moscow's doorstep well before the Allies can make a landing, even going all in with timing due to the neutrality that Japan kept the Americans at. And again, I've been pretty disciplined in my <clears throat> buys buying nothing but uh, infantry and artillery. I lost some trying to put up decent can openers. Never really did get a chance to strike at the axis, stalling them, giving that, that jab to the nose that makes them hiccup a little bit. Hiccup! Oh, he's still burning about the uh, Italian fleet, but of course the Italian fleet can do nothing to help Mo uh, to to hurt Moscow. I mean, the Germans can do all that on their own. So this is going to be a very interesting round. Very interesting to see the attrition, how it spells out. I don't like my odds in Moscow, especially with so many tanks. We'll see. I think I gave him a scare over here, but the timing, like I said, and the positioning might be one round too late. We'll see. All right, be back. We are beginning round five. Hey, everybody, we are beginning round six. Beginning round six. This is the end of round five. Let's take a look. Lots of developed. No, he did not attack Moscow. But, but... Anzac with their little units were able to do something along with the Brits. We took back Java. Hopefully it's enough to keep it. We'll see. Um, he doesn't have full boats, but he has many boats. And of course many bombardments and air units. So we'll see what happens there. Calcutta still seems safe. I brought back some planes from the Mediterranean. Um, they needed to land in West India. Of course, so many land units and aircraft on the mainland. China did some maneuvering, taking back a couple of territories and stacking closer to the road. We'll see if Calcutta can hold up. So far, so good. We've got a blocker here, the French destroyer. And we'll see what he does for Japan. Again, not a huge threat considering that the Americans have been completely absent. But um, his main his main thrust, of course, is here on the Eastern Front. We see our big red token right on the doorstep of Moscow. All of this on the tile is right there ready to attack this turn I was not able to get my eastern units there in time if you count it out round one round two round three round four round five entering round six can't get them there <clears throat> Germany's collecting a lot of money considering that I turned all of the strict neutrals he's got some money up there with some new units but there is some positive for the allies <clears throat> let's go over it we bombed this and maxed it with the three American bombers and the three Brit bombers combined maxed factory max max and max however I now own this the Americans rolled in there the transports brought over more infantry I built a factory which he just bombed with Italy for half damage. My fleet is still there protecting those transports and the transports that were there went back. I purchased 20 infantry, that's 20 infantry coming back over and the Brits came into the channel, bought more sea units, 
did a landing on their own. And there's three transports in the channel there for the Brits. So what we have here is a build up for Italy. And of course a big stack of infantry in Western with all kinds of neat stuff. Jerry has not, not taken out a single bomber in all my bombing raids. He's frustrated. <laughs> Even lost a fighter in an air battle. You gotta throw these bombers into the mix to see if he gets lucky or not. And my gamble has paid off. I've damaged many factories and not lost a bomber. Got many bombers left. The Italians kind of turtling a little bit of course um, northern they've got that blocker there I did not choose to take out the blocker with any Brit planes I decided that I was going to bomb instead my goal is not really Rome anyway so as you can see I've got Africa sewn up and my planes were able to get back to India <coughs> to help out there so I'm looking good in Calcutta so far, especially with the ships all the way there in the Philippines. And I've got great positioning here in Spain and in Normandy with reinforcements coming from both nations. However, this is the problem and I'm almost certain that there's gonna be an attack on Moscow this turn, turn six and we will see how it plays out stay tuned going into turn six okay guys i'm just going to cut in here during round six germany's turn six i'll show you the battle board for the siege of moscow let's just show you some of the colored stacks here This is what I'm faced with. I'm in tough. I only got one AA gun. All right, Jerry and I are gonna roll it out. Hey guys, just cutting in here again on turn six, Battle of Moscow. And the Germans prevailed. They got uh, left with some tanks. Now, I did roll pretty well. Um, Jerry had three AA guns to come in. He's worried about these infantry that might take my capital back. So he decided to take uh, tactical bombers off instead of tanks so he can keep them grounded there. He's got uh, four infantry coming in. I don't think I can take uh, six infantry, six at one against those tanks and AA guns. Probably have to reconsolidate there. But uh, just to show you guys what happened there um, I did record the, the battle rounds there was five combat rounds total my numbers are on the right Jerry's are on the left that's what what happened I was looking good after turn one even after turn two but um, I did come close did come close but in the end of course those tactical bombers rolling at four paired with the tanks is what did it um, usually when it comes to taking capitals, whether it be London or Moscow, tactical bombers play a huge, huge part. So don't think I can take it with the 6th Infantry, I'll consolidate. We'll take a look at the end of the round. We are in round 6, Moscow has fallen. Hey guys, cutting in again. During round 6, lots going on in this round, so I'll just show you what America is up to. The United States are going to split their forces that were in Normandy and Spain. We're going to attack this here, this single Italian. We're going to take France back and we're going to take Holland. So lots of units going into Holland. Lots of units going into France. Lots of units going into southern France. we got a strategic bombing raid on Germany. It's the only factory left that's not maxed out. 
except for the Italians, of course. And these planes are going in on this Italian blocker destroyer. And these guys are about to come over, land in Spain. These transports are going to go back. And these are my purchases. I've got 12 infantry for the transports going back. And I've got tanks going on my European factories. So just to recap a little bit what's going on in this game. Because round 6, there's a lot going on. Of course, Moscow fell. So just a little mid-round catch-up. Be back. Hey everybody, we are going into round seven. We just finished round six. Let's take a look here. Whew. You can tell by the clips that lots happened in round six. So the Americans uh, made their attacks. They still control Holland. They took uh, France. France got 12 IPCs worth of units to put in France. Allies lost southern France to Italy after taking it. Now the bum part about this is that once the Allies took France, they essentially gave up the income that they had for Normandy and southern even before Italy went in and took it back simply because once the capital returns back to France, all territories on the board that were originally controlled by France go back to France. That's a stupid rule. I mean, why would I even take France? But I ignore stuff like that and do the right thing. Take France, get those four infantry on there. I gave up the income that America controlled on those originally controlled French territories. However, right thing to do is to take France. France took some money. They're at 17 IPCs. French Indochina is down, so it went from 19 to 17. However, we started this game with a rule. We're doing out-of-box rules. However, we're not allowing enemies to purge the capital twice. So even if Germany comes in, takes Paris, they're not going to just freely take the 17 IPCs that was just collected. I mean, with out-of-box rules, I mean, why would you ever take France? But those are the rules. Um, so if Germany takes France this turn... They don't want them to spend that 17, but because it was already purged once, we're gonna send it back to the bank. America's already down some income for Normandy. So we've got a blow up box there with all those Americans in on Normandy with the Brits there. So lots and lots of units there in Normandy. Good beachhead there. We maneuvered the uh, units from Washington over to Spain. I built three tanks on my factory in Spain. I built three tanks on my factory in Normandy. Again, there's the blow-up box. And the three bombers from UK went and bombed Northern Italy and Jerry hit a bomber. Jerry hit a bomber finally. He took down one. So Jerry the Jerry's got about 115 IPCs to spend for Germany because he took Moscow. Moscow is down. Italy takes the factory in Stalingrad. Not sure why Germany could get an extra 5 IPCs for controlling that territory. I may want to take that factory back but then again he might take it and get that 5 IPCs. Um, Hey, Sarah, Sarah. Haven't really. I built two infantry on my new factory down here, but I'm so focused on putting pressure on the on the DD coast. Looks like Calcutta might fall. I didn't take Burma. Probably should have, but it doesn't matter if his planes are there or not. I mean, they're going to be able to reach regardless. But everything was able to move in, you know. Would have looked the same way without the planes there. Maybe the planes were in Cheyenne's, uh, Cheyenne State or whatever. Sean State. So I brought some Anzac bombers over to get killed. Hopefully we can fend them off. I got a damaged factory, but I was able to purchase at least one fighter and put that on there. 
got the extra money from taking these islands back and they're holding put up a couple of blockers at least so the bombardments couldn't get in there even though my navy would block bombardments but you now we'll see I mean Japan could have really made the Allies hurt over here I mean I still hold Hawaii if he takes Calcutta and Hawaii, it's game over. That's the out-of-box victory conditions. So nothing over here in the Pacific. We've got an upside-down factory. Of course, you saw the American forces over there. Fleets are surrounded around the islands. Don't have much there in Sydney. Got those couple blockers, like I said. China moved up to be a nuisance. See which direction he goes. Maybe splits his forces and achieves both objectives. Who knows? But I've got North Africa and the Middle East sewn up here. Although this is this is scary because of the money that can be collected, and that money has no other place to go besides to the west and the Allied beachhead. And we've got more transports and more infantry coming. That's 20 infantry in Spain with three tanks. Again, it's, a, it's all about attrition now. Don't know what these uh, infantry can do over here. And there's absolutely no help coming. Zero help coming for the Russians. Lots of positives for both sides here, but it is attrition now in Calcutta and in Paris. Be back. Hey everybody, I'm cutting in here during round seven. Japan's turn, round seven, showing you the battle board for the Battle of Calcutta. You can see the stacks. Looks pretty grim. And this is what happens when you ignore Japan. All these planes can get there. I've got some significant AA rolls, and uh, we'll see if that stack of infantry hold up, but pretty overwhelming. This is for Calcutta. Be right back. Hey everyone cutting in here again during turn 7, uh, Calcutta has fallen, of course. Calcutta has fallen. Got some mechs there, you know, the fleet came in after taking care of the blockers. Non-combat moved into there, landed in Burma. I'll show you. I hit four aircraft with my anti-aircraft gun. The first uh, round he did very well with 19 hits to my nine. I didn't even count what I did in the second round because it was a sweep after that. But um, I think I did pretty good. What, what what did I hit on the second one, Jerry? I'm in here. Okay. <laughs> um, but still, he's got four mechanized infantry left. He's poised to keep it. Could even come and threaten the Middle East. So with virtually no enemy and that Chinese stack, the only thing, remember the Russians retreated to try and save Moscow. And the stack of Chinese are the only thing that's left. Got a few big boats that are basically toast nothing in Anzac really and of course this is all we have for America but Japan's turn is done and America is doing something of their own we're doing an amphibious assault with our transports from Spain going up to sea zone 112 we're going to do an amphibious assault in western Germany. We're going to take the units that were in Holland left over. And we are bringing tanks and aircraft from Normandy. That's the battle there. This is what's left again, of course, all these transports. 
So the bombarding units and the transports are right where that token is. We're going into the Western Germany. Germany took Paris back. Still have the Brits there that can take Paris back. But uh, we're kind of all in now on this here. Let's roll it out, see what happens. Hey guys, all right. Game, <laughs> game set match. Decided to call it quit. Decided to call it a stalemate. We are in round seven. Okay, and uh, America just took Western Germany. America just took Western Germany. And the UK just took Paris back, of course, lost all their planes trying to do it. They rolled, rolled very badly. Americans did good taking Western Germany, but Brits did badly taking back Paris. Of course, there's uh, so many bad rules involved with this for the Allies. The losing of those original territories, the, the French getting all the territories back and their money just to lose it again and again. I mean, thank goodness for our house rule or else the Axis would just keep taking France back. Uh, something's broken there. But um, quite happy with the way I played over here. Um, I think we agree that with this stack here, I didn't even purchase for America yet. Um, we just went ahead because we're tired, it's late, and we just went ahead with the battles. But I could purchase on this factory, could purchase on this factory. Britain hasn't bought yet. They haven't even transported units to support Normandy. So Normandy is locked up, even though they may take France back. Normandy is locked up. They can't take Western Germany back. It's only a matter of time before we do the Denmark can opener. Um, even though uh, Germany has lots of income, lots of income, um, they can only build the 10 units on the one factory. Uh, so over here though is a different scene. The Japanese are dominant. They took Calcutta, they've got no enemies here to the west. And it's just with all that money straight east now, they don't even have to worry about the Chinese, they could take Sydney, or they could take, sorry for all the dice and the shrapnel, but uh, they could take Hawaii to get that sixth city in the Pacific. Another stupid rule, the victory conditions. So even if I take Berlin as the allies, the only thing Japan needs to do is take Hawaii to actually win the game regardless of what's happening over in Europe, but We're calling it a stalemate um, We're calling it a draw He's definitely won on the Pacific side Nothing the Allies can do there. They've got basically zero enemies. They can just go and take cities They could do that in three rounds. No problem. They're out of position, but three rounds they can definitely take it. However, we also understand that if the Allies have three rounds over here, they could definitely take Berlin. So, really fun game. Again, I mean, what you're seeing here doesn't tell the whole story because we're calling it quits. It's late. I haven't purchased my units in Washington. I've made all my attacks, but there would be three tanks in Spain. There would be three tanks in Normandy. There would be British units in Normandy. All right. And then... Of course, you know, Italy is going to try and get many of these back. France, maybe support Berlin by trying to take Western Germany. But the supply line is established over here. It's just going to be more and more infantry and stuff. And with the transports the Brits have, they can support those territories, no problem. There's nothing more for the Axis to accomplish here. They did it all. They took... Moscow they took Calcutta and it's a matter of time again like I said that they just take the necessary cities to win on this side and we all know that the Allies need to control both sorry they need to control all of Berlin Rome and Tokyo to win this game so a lot of silly rules in G40 have been exposed here but um, Jerry did you have fun I had fun what do you think overall? Overall, 
it's actually interesting that you would sacrifice the Pacific to actually win on the Atlantic. After. Well, wait a minute. We, we saw how fast you took Moscow. Yeah. Now, if I didn't do this, this game would have been over two rounds ago because as soon as Moscow falls, it's like if I don't have any pressure at all in the West, there's no point in going on. But the only reason why we even played two more rounds after Moscow fell is because I did have pressure over here, and that pressure actually turned into something positive for the allies so yes yeah yep so do you think that you would have done things anything differently with japan or you achieved everything you wanted to uh no i achieved what i wanted to do with japan okay excellent and like you said i mean your positioning is kind of bad right now but it's only a matter of time before you get to those points where you can definitely win the game all right guys so well, thanks a lot um sorry for the wonky last couple of rounds uh didn't really go into the purchasing new units and collecting income and whatnot um a lot of this information management is is uh tough on the brains when you've been playing for about i don't know 10 hours <laughs> but uh, i just want to thank uh jerry jerry for coming and gaming with me um we are in lockdown but uh we're not doing big groups, but we're symptom free and we decided to have a fun game. It's been a while since we chucked dice and um, just wishing all you guys well. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for looking at the outcome of this game and where we went. And I had a lot of fun. I Not much you can do with the Moscow crush. This game for experienced veterans who know how to do the Moscow Crush, it's almost a guarantee to them. I did almost everything I could to save Moscow. Maybe a couple of things I could have done better. But when the Panzers are rolling like that, and it takes so long for an allied buildup, not only an allied buildup, but a significant allied buildup to apply significant pressure even after after Moscow falls because let's face it with experienced players Moscow is gonna fall and you know maybe there was a few small things I could have done differently maybe to build up the Burma road in the beginning so that the Japanese didn't get into Burma so fast but you know Jerry's very experienced of crushing Calcutta and I believe that he was gonna get to there anyway not a whole lot of major mistakes. Jerry might say that losing his Italian fleet to my planes off the coast of Egypt there was a major mistake. But, you know, we had a pretty solid game. We both played very well. We both got pretty fair dice overall. Um, just overall a great, great game. I want to thank my buddy Jerry the Jerry for gaming with me. Uh, sorry uh, we couldn't come up with a solid winner. We would need about three or four more hours and we just don't have it. Still a lot of pieces on the board. A lot of fighting to do. We had some big, big battles there in the end. And your brain does get tired, especially when you're doing this many nations with just two people. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate you checking this out. I uh, hope it was entertaining. Uh, if you have any questions about the process of the game let me know and i will check out your comments take care be safe guys may all your rolls be one